Substances that are insoluble in water, such as silver chloride, AgCl, actually do dissolve a very, very small amount. So this silver chloride solid actually has a very small amount of silver ions and chloride ions floating around in solution. The dissolved silver ions and chloride ions exist in equilibrium with the solid undissolved silver chloride, AgCl. So we can write a balanced equation, an equilibrium equation, for the small amount of silver chloride that actually dissolves in solution. And that equation is going to look like this, AgCl solid in equilibrium with the silver ions aqueous and the chloride ions aqueous. Because this is an equilibrium equation, we can write an equilibrium expression. Remember, equilibrium expressions are the products, which in this case is silver and chloride, the products over the reactants, each raised to their stoichiometric coefficients, silver and chloride are each one, and we leave out pure liquids and we leave out pure solids, which means that there's nothing on the left-hand side of the equation to write in this equilibrium expression. So there isn't, a, this isn't a fraction, there isn't gonna be anything down here in the denominator. This equilibrium um, expression is a solubility equilibrium expression. We give the equilibrium constant K, the subscript SP, that KSP stands for solubility product. We refer to this as the solubility constant. Again, SP stands for solubility product. And um, these, in general, these KSP values are extremely small because, again, there is only a very small amount of ions that are actually dissolving in solution. We can learn a lot about the solubility of a substance by taking a look at its KSP value. If, like, if we have a, a substance that has a relatively large or a bigger value of KSP, that, um, because it is an equilibrium constant, that just means that we have a lot of product, the same as any large value of any equilibrium constant. So bigger KSP value means that we have lots of product. And when we're talking specifically about solubility, um, that means that we have a lot of dissolved uh, a lot of a lot of our solid has dissolved and dissociated. And the word that we use to describe a substance that has a lot um, that has been dissolved or a lot that has been dissociated, the word that we use is soluble. So if something has a large KSP value, that just means that it is more soluble. Again, soluble, soluble the term soluble is just referring to a substance's um, willingness to dissolve in solution. Solubility is a measure of how soluble a substance is. And it is calculated by taking the grams of the solute that have actually dissolved in the solution. So we're not talking about the parts that have remained solid, but we're talking about the parts that have actually dissolved and dissociated. The grams of the solute that have dissolved divided by the liters of the solution. Sometimes we express solubility in units of moles per liter instead of in units of grams per liter. And in that situation, we refer to it as the molar solubility. But when we just say solubility, the units that we're talking about there are grams per liter. So molar solubility is going to be the moles of the solute. Let's see if I can squeeze that in. Moles of the solute divided by the liters of the solution. And again, this is the moles of the solute that have been dissolved, but I don't have room to write that over there. Let's practice writing another KSP equation for another another reaction. So let's say Ag2S, silver sulfide solid, does not dissolve in solution, but what that really means is that it dissolves a really small amount. There's two silver ions here, so we've got two Ag plus, plus 
plus S minus the sulfide ion. And let's write the equilibrium expression for this guy. KSP equals the products Ag plus. Don't forget, raise it to its stoichiometric coefficient. And our other product, S2 minus. We can, um, not only can we learn a lot about the system by looking at its value of K, we can also learn a lot about the system by looking at its value of Q. We haven't talked about Q in a long time. Q and K are calculated in the exact same way. So Q is also calculated by taking products over reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. So again, the equation that we use to calculate K is exactly the same as the equation that we use to calculate Q. The difference be between K and Q is that we use the term K when we know that the, the system is in equilibrium. And we use the term Q when we're not sure if it's in equilibrium. It might be, it might be, might not be. We determine whether a system is in equilibrium or not by calculating Q and comparing Q to KSP. When Q is equal to KSP, in this case, when Q is equal to any K, we know that that means that the system is in equilibrium. And when we're talking specifically about solubility, that means that we have dissolved the maximum amount of, in this case, the maximum amount of silver ions and sulfide ions. So that would be what we would refer to as a saturated solution. Saturated solution, meaning that we have the max amount that has been dissolved. If we calculate Q and Q ends up being less than KSP, that just tells us that the solution is unsaturated. If Q is less than KSP, we have not quite enough of our products over here. Um, so that means that it's not all the way done being dissolved or dissociated. So it's got a little bit more to go. And if Q is, I think I'm gonna run out of room here, put that down there. If Q is greater than KSP, this is a situation that doesn't happen very often. If Q is greater than KSP, that means that the concentrations of our dissolved ions are larger than what they should be. This is a solution that we describe as being super saturated. So somehow we have managed to trick this solution into allowing a little bit extra um, ions to be dissolved. In the next couple of videos, um, I'm going to go over calculations, different types of calculations with solubility equilibria.